Let's have a look at our next question. Okay. Beautiful diagram over here. We've got two images that's been represented over there. It's known as line thunderstorms. Because as you can see, the thunderstorms is in a line. Different name for it is also moisture front. Okay, they identify it. But line thunderstorms, as you can see. So I'm going to explain the situation quickly to you. Okay, they've given, given us a beautiful satellite image. Now, first of all, let's just quickly have a look what they identify over here. Now, what I see over here at A, we just discussed this in the previous image. What do we have here? You can see it's a high-pressure system, and let's identify it. What is that high-pressure system? It's the South Atlantic high-pressure system. Okay, I like this diagram because I'm going to add a little detail to it. What do we have here? It creates, what did we say the South Atlantic high-pressure system does? It creates cool and dry conditions. Okay. Now, very importantly, why cool and dry conditions? Because what ocean current do we find here on the west coast of southern Africa? Eh? The Bengala current. Okay. Now we're moving to the opposite, opposite side. What high-pressure system do we have over here? So over the east coast, just off the east coast of South Africa, we have the South Indian high pressure system. Remember the anti-clockwise circulation of air. Okay, just want to use my blue pen over there. Why anti-clockwise? That's clockwise. Sorry, I'm going cuckoo. Let's just do that. Anti-clockwise circulation of air. There you go. Okay, same with the high pressure system over the Atlantic Ocean, anti clockwise circulation of air. Okay, we have the South Indian high pressure. What do we know? It creates warm, moist conditions. Okay, very importantly over here, right? Why warm, moist conditions? Because there's a warm ocean current moving down the east coast of southern Africa. And as you can see, it's known as the warm Mozambique current. Okay. Now, what else can we pick up over here? We got a moisture front. Okay. As you can see over there. Now, let's first of all just define the front. Okay. It separates... separates two different masses of air. Okay. Now, the two masses of air that they are separating is the warm, moist air coming in from this side. Let me just add it over there from the South Indian high pressure system. It separates warm, and moist, and it separates the air from the cool, dry air coming from the South Atlantic high pressure. Okay. Now, very importantly, pay attention to the following. When do we experience this line thunderstorms? Okay. Now, like my earlier questions, something is not present over here, and we just we just seen it. The South Indian high pressure is there. The South Atlantic high pressure system is there. Okay, where's the Kalahari? It's not there. Why not? Have a look at the date. The 14th of December. Okay, so it's summer. There's no Kalahari high pressure over the interior. Two things why I can tell that. Because look at the cloud formation taking place over the interior. It means that warm, moist air can go and move from the east coast, all above the escarpment into the interior. Okay. So we have moist air coming in. So it rises, it cools, it condenses, and we've got cloud formation. And you can see the cloud formation, right, on the satellite image. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. And then 
we have a photo over here of lightning. Okay, and first of all, if you think of lightning, you think of cumulus nimbus clouds. Am I correct? It's rain clouds. So what's happening over here? I'm going to draw a cross-section for you what happens at this moisture front. Okay, this whole system moves from west to east. West to east. Okay, I'm going to give you, draw a cross-section diagram to interpret that satellite image. Okay, there's the surface. Let's make this the moisture front. Okay, that's the moisture front. Okay, so what do we have on the one side? We have cool, dry air coming in from the South Atlantic. Okay, we have warm, moist air coming in, coming in from the South India. Okay, so they're meeting over there. Now, what's going to happen, great Charles? Okay, you've learned about this with mid latitude cyclones. What happens when that cold front catches up with the warm front? What do we know about cold air? It's heavier, it's denser. Okay, so what happens? This cool air is heavier and denser. They meet at the moisture front, and what happens? Cloud formation, cumulonimbus clouds. Because this cool, dry air forces the warm, moist air to rise and it cools condensed clouds and it rains. Okay, and this whole system moves from west to east over the interior of Southern Africa because the cool dry air is denser, I can also say it heavier. Okay, and it forces this warm moist air to rise along the moisture front. Okay, so let's just quickly go and have a look at this questions as being asked. Okay, 2.3.1, the high pressure system on the map from part, form part of a global pressure belt, name this global pressure belt, the high pressure systems, okay, we already discussed it a little bit earlier, what do we find these high pressure belts, we discussed it in the previous question, it's situated on the 30 degree latitude line, and this pressure belt is known as the subtropical High pressure belt. Okay. Explain how the air movement at A and B causes the development of the moisture front. Okay. Now, it's very simple. The cool, dry air, right, as you can see identify on our diagram, at A is cool and dry, and it meets up with the warm, moist air from B. As you can see, there's A and there's B. Okay, where is this air coming from? From a southwesterly direction. Where is this air coming from? From a northeasterly direction. Okay, so we can say, what can we say? Cool, dry air, I'm just gonna say the cool, dry air and warm and the moist air. meet. Okay. Now if you look at question 2.3.3, use both the map and the photo to answer the questions that follow. Identify the cloud type that developed at E during the formation of the moisture front. I've already mentioned to you, we can see lightning. Lightning is associated with cumulus clouds and when it's raining we have cumulonimbus clouds. Cumulus Nimbus. Okay, now this is a trick question. I like this question, but we need to follow a protocol. Name the type of rainfall that will occur in the area shown in the photo. Now, if we associate cumulative nimbus class, we usually associate it with, with uh, convection rain, but very important the moisture front is present. So, it's line thunderstorms, it's known as line thunderstorms, 
Why? Because it's a moisture front. Okay, the moisture front create the line thunderstorm. So it's known as frontal rain. Okay, nice question, but they tried to trick you over there. But because it's a moisture front, that's the reason why. If we just quickly have a look at C, will the settlement in the photo be found at C or D on the map? Okay, let's just quickly back, go back. So there's C and there's D. That's quite easy to be able to, to answer this question. First of all, cumulonimbus clouds is cloud formation. You can see it, it's going to be D. You can see there's no cloud cover at C. Why? Because the air is cool and dry. Okay, you can look at the cloud formation, you can see the cloud formation at D. So the correct answer is definitely D. Okay, and give a reason for your answer because all the moisture all the moisture develop on the east. On the eastern side of the moisture front. Okay. Now, if you look at the last question, it's a paragraph question. Now, remember, okay, I have to warn you. So, we're getting closer to the exam. You cannot write your answer in bullet formation or in point formation. Great Twelves, they're going to penalize you. Okay. You will have to write your question in paragraph format. Okay. Very important. So, do not write it in bullet formation or in point formation. Please answer this question in paragraph form. Okay. In a paragraph of approximately eight lines, discuss the impact that this type of rainfall will have on agricultural activities in the area surrounding the settlement. Now, agriculture, first of all, is farming. Okay. So what impact is it going to have on the farming? Okay. Now, always remember, right, impact can be positive and negative, okay? It can be a positive impact or a negative impact. So I'm going to write it down there. Positive or it can be negative. Okay. And when we think of the impact on the agriculture, it can be economically it can be social, no, not really social, environmental. Okay, now first of all, let's concentrate on the negative impacts. Okay, the rain can cause flooding. What else? The lightning, as you can see, may cause fires. Okay, the lightning might even strike the animals, struck the animals, and might kill them. Okay, and then lastly, the flooding can cause soil erosion. Okay, so quite a few negative impacts, but I can definitely assure you that there's can be. Positive impacts is obviously very important, is great for dams and irrigation to be able to water their crops. Okay, the soil will be fertilized. And lastly, the groundwater will be revived. Okay, because many farmers use boreholes to be able to supply enough water for their agricultural activities. 